949 the city lee county baby what up what up it's your boy bugs laveau and it's your boy piso bam wham this is a very special episode of city boys we have a a special musical guest the very first one very first, first one man. first one shout out to her she took a chance on us miss drip when i walked you Ms. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so without it's diamond dancing, you know what I'm saying? It's without diamond dancing for real right now. Without oh further ado, introduce yourself. You already know who it is. It's your girl Susie Soprano. What's good? What's good? Yo, now, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it 100. Last year there was like a list, like a like a Southwest Florida MC's hottest list, mm-hmm. and I kind of you know I think what, what you what they had you like four five. I don't even remember that. Started me off at nine. though. that list was bogus as hell. Only well, because of my placement, though. Everybody on there is cool. How'd they end it though? At nine? I thought it was higher than that. Nah, I think I was like, like I thought like six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can't remember. And I was one of those. I was contesting, and I was. I didn't think Susie should be so high. I thought she should have been lower on that list. But you know, a lot has happened. She has surpassed expectations. She has leveled up to another plateau. Yes, sir. I could tell by all the jewelry around her neck, and it's, and it's very real. So without further ado, man, let's let's get to the beginning, man. Uh, I know you're from Detroit, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you did, when did you start like your musical career? Um, I, I mean, I want to say I started recording. I was 11 years old. I moved to Atlanta, mm-hmm. started recording, um, and I just continued it. But I always like rap, like even mm-hmm. when I was in Detroit, like I was super young. Mm-hmm. Like five, six, all that. Did your so, parents do anything like music related? Um, my dad, he used to uh play behind Tina Marie okay. and Ray Parker Jr. Um so he would still you, kinda like do a singing thing. So now. would you say that had like any influence of you wanting to do music or was that like your own thing? I mean my dad kinda influenced me but my brother really influenced me to rap because my brother used to rap and my cousin behind uh-huh. So he used to rap when they was younger and um my brother was older brother, right? Yeah. Okay. He would come to me and he would like, uh, let me listen to the raps he wrote. I was like, damn, I want to do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, I just like, picked up on it, it. Yeah. and my mom wrote poetry, so it was dope. just yeah, it was just like fate. Yeah. You feel like you get slept on, like especially when you was coming up, you being like a female. Um, not really. I always thought that it made me, it made it better for me because people always kind of like before they heard me, it's just like mm, you know whatever. Mm-hmm. But then when they heard me, it's just like damn. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So I, I use it as to my advantage. Like it really so being a, would you say like being a female in the music industry, would that give you an advantage? Because honestly, I would think like it would make you the underdog. I think it'll only give you an advantage if you really got them bars. Like if uh-huh. you can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, it's different. Like a lot of these female rappers only get listened to because they cute. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not saying that they trash, but it's just but like no, that's fact. most of the time, oh, you cute. I'm going to check you out. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the whole fact of them being cute masks, the whole or fact they, that they ain't that dope. You know what I'm saying? Or they fucking the producer. That too. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, it happens, bro. It happens. Using cheat codes. And- I've, I've been around, you know, I've yeah. seen a lot in my cheat life. Codes. But uh, when did you decide that you wanted to start taking this as like serious? You know what I'm saying? Because everybody starts rapping, everybody starts, you know. But when you was like, yo, this is like a career I want to. Tune into because you say you were in like, Atlanta in like at 11, right? Yeah, I moved to Florida and I was 14, so okay. I was still like recording. I would go to like my homeboy's house, like they had like a little setup, and um, I was still like recording here and there, but I didn't really start taking it serious until like 2009. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom, uh, she had gave my brother a bunch of money, mm-hmm. she gave all of us a bunch of money, but he took his half and he was like, you know what. I'm going to go buy some studio equipment. So he bought everything. My cousin had the laptop already. So yeah. he went about the, the speakers, the mic, all that. Um, so I just started learning it myself. And then I'm like, you know what? I really want to take songwriting and stuff serious. So I started honing yeah, my man. craft. It wasn't until about 2012 that I actually started getting into the industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and How'd you like yeah. get into the industry? Yeah, because um, like before, before I even heard your music, I'm seeing your face with like, DJ Khaled, Lil Wayne. Like, oh, yeah. So I'm thinking, like, this girl already made it. Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Nah. See, well, I had met a guy, and um, he liked to be low, so we're going to leave him nameless. Uh-huh. I met this guy, and he was actually cool with um, Terror Squad. Yeah. Joe and all them. So uh, Raul, which is like, 
uh, I think he's probably Joe brother. I'm not sure if they blood or not, but mm -hmm. they super close. So um, he heard me in the studio, and uh, he wanted to manage me. So it was that? That's what it was from there. Mm -hmm. uh, he managed me, started linking me up with people, getting me connected, um, and it was it was over with from there. So then I wonder, like, this is a question that I always wonder: Is management like important? Because like I hear, all right, so when yeah. artists start off, they would say like, "Oh, I need a manager." But at the same time, don't you have to put in the footwork anyway and the manager is just keeping you organized? Or is it bigger than that? Um, it's like, I feel like if you you just starting out, you ain't really booking a lot of shows. Like, you have to give the manager something to work for. Like, right. if you're not out here, if you don't need a manager, why have a manager? You right. know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you have to be out here uh, not being able to keep up with your bookings. Like, you know, or... I feel like it would only make sense to have a manager if you you know not on the level to need one if that manager can really do something for you. Like if you get a manager that's in the industry already connected and they can open these doors for you, sure have a manager. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, if it's just some some guy in your hood talking about, hey, I manage artists, mm -hmm. it's, it's pointless. You know right. what I'm saying? Like neither one of y'all really yeah. don't get anywhere right away. It's a lot of those in four minds. Yeah. But like my question is, all right, so you you were managed by him, right? But you're not managing by anymore. No, not anymore. So like. So within that period of you leaving that management, did you pick up new management right away or you was kind of like floating for a little bit? Um, I had people that like, you know, wanted to manage me or, you know, whatever. Um, I did get with a lady named Rita Lee. Uh, shout out Rita Lee. She, um, she worked for Empire. Um, okay. I was with her for a while. Um, and nothing came came. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I was dealing with, I had a contract with Empire for a little bit. Um, then I got with Black Bag Entertainment. Mm -hmm. They ended up getting under Empire too. Excuse me. They ended up getting under Empire as well. Uh, this was like last year. That's why I was, when y'all okay, made that so list, I it. was already signed. I had already had a deal. Right. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, so um, <laughs> I was okay. in, I was in uh, Vegas and like Cali and stuff doing some stuff. Um, but then when the Trina situation came about, you know, me and her, we still cool, but. You know what I'm saying? We just kind of parted ways, so it's like... Who, you and Rita Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How did the whole Trina situation come about? Uh, Damn. See, I'm not going to lie. It seemed kind of like random, like out of nowhere. Yeah, it, 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 it did kind of seem random yeah, because nobody sense. really knew about it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't random for me. It was like um, I had did a show in Naples, uh, did a performance um, for my homeboy PBG. Okay. He had an album release. Shout out PBG. Shout out PBG. He had an album release in Naples. He had a couple uh, Love and Hip Hop Miami cast members there, mm -hmm. Brian McKinney, uh, a couple others. I can't remember exactly everybody, but um, I know Pleasure P was there. Joy Young, she saw me perform. She was like really digging my performance and stuff like that. So um, she was telling me like, "Yo, Trina's about to, you know, get her label back up and running and stuff like that." She was like, "You know, you don't necessarily have to sign it, Trina, but however way I can help you, I'm gonna help you." And I'm like, "Okay." Okay. So um, she would like, you know, link me with little people here and there. But um, she had been telling Trina about me the whole time. I didn't notice. But the A&R from Rockstar had hit me up one day. It was like random. He was like, yo, Trina told me to reach out to you. So what was like so your reaction like, at that moment when all right, the A&R hit you I up? was just like, wow. Like I ended up, like I knew it kind of was going to happen uh -huh. eventually because cause of joy. I felt like she was going to. Being on Trina about me, um, I didn't really know that she was, but I kind of felt like she, you know, what I'm saying she effed with me so hard that eventually that was what was gonna happen. So was it like the shock factor was like when it finally came, or when yeah, you were already working? the shock factor literally is coming like now. Like it took me a while to actually like, it took a while to hit me. I ain't gonna lie. Like even the love and hip hop stuff, like I still be like, which is big. Yeah. Hold huge. on, you on love and hip hop? Um, yeah, I was <laughs> for real. Okay. I mean, I, had, I don't know if that's like. I don't know. I'm TV. not a cast member. I don't TV. matter, bro. Let me help you. Wow. A bit on TV. Yeah, I ain't a cast member. Okay. Um, I get the what past you're from, uh, the most recent episode that I was on. It was actually the first episode that aired. Um, but it was just like a quick flash of my face. Like uh, it was a segment that Rico Love had did. Uh -huh. Okay, you know it, it was. Oh, I thought you was cool. on on the show, like throwing, oh, nah. throwing drinks at somebody. No, 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 no. I ain't, they ain't even going to play with me like that. <laughs> but um, I do have a performance scene that's right. it's mm -hmm. supposed to be Aaron, yeah. Yeah, so. see, that's, that's yeah, a good so stay look. tuned for that. Yeah, definitely stay tuned. When is Love & Hip Hop air every Wednesday? 
I believe so. All right, so you gotta stay tuned for that episode. So it's a soprano in that bill. Yeah, man. What uh? But what made you like? All right, so you hear all these stories of like people signing these bad deals again under bad management. What made you finally like? You know what I'm saying? Go with like Rockstar. What made you say like? You know what? This is something I could trust. Um, the fact that it was Trina. You know what I'm saying? Like she don't really. There's really no research to be done on Trina. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to, you know. It's, she's a household name, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I trust her judgment. Like, I trust her as an artist, you know. Like, um, she's been doing this herself for how many years now, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then being the fact that she's a female, it's like I tried it, you know what I'm saying, with all these males. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like... She understands you better? Yeah. And it, I just felt like it was divine. It was divine order. Like, like it was just supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen with Trina. What a... Well, see, something when you were talking, talking about your story earlier... I always wondered, like, you know, you had all this talent, and you saying that you was originally, you had moved from Atlanta. What made you stay in South Florida all this time? Like, why didn't you move back to Atlanta? That's where, like, all the music stuff pops off. Well, I did go back to Atlanta for a little bit mm-hmm. in, like, 2016. I went back for a couple months. Um, and I was working with uh, Atlantic APG. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working with Winter Circle out there. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was just doing some, like, writing and stuff like that. Um, so I spent time out there. I do want to go back, though. Mm-hmm. I do want to go back. I definitely want to go back. It's just with Trina and everything being here in Florida, yeah, it just kind of wouldn't make yeah. sense for me to be in Atlanta right now right. when they be calling me for stuff like love and hip hop. And then you know I would have to. I'd rather travel two hours than you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, so when that's you got, why I haven't made that move. When you started buzzing like in Southwest Florida, right? Does that make did that play any part of well being in the Southwest Florida scene or being in Florida period, right? Did that play any part of you wanting to sign with Trina because of like the yeah, relation yeah. or or just Do you do you care about like the Southwest Florida scene pretty much? Like Yeah, I just think that I care about what I care about in the Southwest Florida mm-hmm. scene. Like right. and how much would you say it helped? You gotta weed out the you know it's what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 you have to weed that out. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, I mean she respected, like, not even just on a Florida standpoint, you know what I'm saying? Like, for female rap, period, for rap, you know what I'm saying? For everybody, like, first time I ever seen Trina, I was, like, eight years old. I was in Michigan, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, like, regardless of my geographical location, it's still just, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This I got I to do this Trina thing because it was just foolproof for me, like, I don't know. You've seen him before. You got his opportunity in front of you. Right, right, right. I feel that. Plus, I just felt like I needed to make it a stepping stone rather than just be like, I'm signing Trina. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to see it as something something that could catapult me to, you know what I'm saying? That's right. I got got another question. Um, Now, you being a female artist, from, from some of the music that I have listened to, you don't really like... I don't know. To me, you don't sound like a female artist. You just sound like an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you, is that like purposely right, right. something that you do or do you like? Yeah. Do I do that purposely because I don't know. I just want, I don't want to be marginalized to, you know what I'm saying? I want everybody to be able to feel like they can listen to me. Yeah. I don't want my crowd to just be females. Then I'm, when, you know, when the album sale time come. I'm just subjecting to myself to getting female album sales when I want to reach everybody. Like, I want to try to get kids. I want to get males, too. Like, mm-hmm. I want a nigga to, excuse me, I want a guy to ride around, you know what I'm saying, bumping me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that Susie. I can listen to Susie. You know what I'm saying? It you know, ain't gonna look, it be sounding you know? crazy when I see guys ride around, like, listening to City Girls. Yeah, and they talk about popping pussy. That's right. That's why I feel like as a female artist, Ray, if you're going to, like, make music for the guys, not even for the guys, but if you want to make music and you want everyone to listen yeah, to it's it, just, it can't be strictly just that. It got to be universal. Like, and then if, if you know what I'm saying, if a chick riding around in her car and her guy on the side and she listening to me, mm-hmm. He ain't gonna feel like annoyed, like oh my god, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a balance, and I also do that because a lot of times I be in writer mode more than I be in artist mode. Mm-hmm. So I try to keep, you know what I'm saying, everything pretty much gender neutral. So okay, so and so might want to take this song. He's a guy. So and so might want to take this song. That's a female. You know okay. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just a natural thing. Like I don't know, I just don't be putting too much into it. In other words, if you want Susie to make your shit hot, holla at her for ghostwriting purposes. Facts. I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely on that. Uh, you got, now you got a show coming up the 20th, 
right? Yep, definitely. Yeah. Where, where, where's the show? Uh, Centennial Park. Centennial. Yeah, is that is that so your first time performing in Fort Myers? Nah, right? No, no, nah, nah. I performed out here before, but that's like my first like big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think the last like major performance I would say was major was uh the Migo show. I think it was like 2015 or yeah, something like that. That was ago. back. Yeah, that was a minute. I mean, that was Harborside, right? Yep. Yeah. How I I many like outside venues have you done? Um. I can't even count, man. I Wait, do a is lot there like of... a difference between like performing outside rather than being in a club? Like, do you have to prepare in any different type of way? Is it the way you perform? Is it um, different? The weather. I mean, I think that's the only thing that would play a factor. Like, mm-hmm. just the weather. You know what I'm or saying? Like crowd interaction. Does that even um, play a factor? No, I feel like if it's just on you, you know what I'm saying? It don't got nothing to do with, like, where you at. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can move the crowd, you can move them. Like, I think the biggest thing would be the weather. Like, that's probably the only thing I could think of Yeah. to, like, Or, like, compare. mid versus bird shit on you or some crazy Yeah, shit. like, like you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you and Trina going to debut a new song the 20th? Keep it real. Keep it real. We ain't going to tell nobody. Oh. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I mean, I got some stuff where, but um, it's on the it's on, like a, it's on a different vibe. It's, mm. So uh, I'm not sure when it's going to drop, but Just know yeah. That Hold on. When's, when's, you got like a single dropping? Like, um, or y'all just working They have an uh, album dropping. It's a compilation album for the label. Oh, okay. okay. I got like two records on there. Well, do you so, know when that's coming out? Got an idea? Uh, It's supposed to be this month, early this month. Oh, damn. All right. Like, yeah, they have uh, some type of... um. I guess they supposed to be. Uh, I don't know what label it is yet. Mm-hmm. They ain't tell me. Mm-hmm. But we getting a new deal with somebody right, for the label. So that. yeah. Well, congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank congratulations. You. So everybody, make sure to check out Susie, rocking the stage Centennial, January twentieth. Yes, sir. Right. Make sure yep. you pull up, show love, all that other stuff. You know. Uh, now before we go, I want to end this with a poem. You know what I'm saying? A person like me <laughs> likes to bear his soul from you time to time. Me, uh, <clears throat> so if y'all feel me, I gotta snap y'all fingers. If you know what I'm saying, because this is, this is very vulnerable for me. Yes, yes. <laughs> My poem goes like this: <clears throat> Don't focus on a bigger picture, and end up ignoring the smaller details. Don't get tangled up in the smaller details and lose sight of the bigger picture. In other words, while you make your girl cry, she going to work, and somebody at her job is buying her lunch. Stop being petty with your girl, King. The end. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. It's your boy Buzzy the Vogue, Pizzo Ben Wham, Susie Soprano, 94.9, the City Boys. We out of here. Wham. <laughs>